Hello, Quinnell, and welcome to Q Today. I'm Allison Duddy. And I'm Ron Campbell, and this is our show for October 30th. All right, coming up on today's show, our top story from The Observer, pulp business down while lumber prices up, according to Canfor, and the art gallery needs volunteers. And coming up later on on the show is a report on last weekend's Child Development Center Variety Show. Okay, here at Q Today we bring you the recent news provided by our good partnership with the Quinell Caribou Observer, combined with a bit of our own commentary. And we also want to bring you your stories from the community. Uh, do you want to promote uh, something, a special event that you're putting on? Do you have some concern that you'd like to express either about municipal government, provincial government? Or are you sp especially pleased and proud of something or someone in our community? Whatever you think is important, we think is important. Our field crews are out there and they want to talk to you. So email us at qtoday at qcatv.ca with your story or ask us to cover a story you know the community would just love to know more about. Moving on to the news, remember we just give the highlights, so if you want to get all the details, pick up your copy of the Quinell Caribou Observer. And now well, over to Ron here for the news. Thank you, Allison. Okay. And you know how pulp and lumber prices uh, involve this, uh, our city because we're so closely tied to, the, that, uh, to those two uh, industries. Mm -hmm. uh, Canfor credits strong uh, offshore demand and an increase in construction for higher lumber sales. The Canfor Corporation reported net income attributable to shareholders of 22.2 million or 16 cents per share for the third quarter of 2012. This is up considerably from the same period last year, which saw a shareholder net loss of 21.6 million, or 15 cents per share. The company reported moderate market improvements in the third quarter of this year, crediting uh, further stabilization of underlying demand in uh, both North American and offshore markets. While market conditions in China continue to show solid demand, Japan also remained stable uh, through the quarter. The release also said that global software pulp markets weakened throughout the summer months, with price erosion occurring for most of the quarter. Regarding the pulp and paper results this quarter, Canfor President CEO Don Canty said it was a tough quarter as our pulp business faced challenges uh, presented by weaker markets and the Canfor pulp facilities came out of an, an extended period of major maintenance and capital upgrades. Candy said that the focus now is on getting tho these recently upgraded pulp mills achieving targeted operating rates. In other words, Allison, I think he's trying to say that he wants to recover some of the money they put into the pulp mills. I would guess you're probably right there, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving along, the Quinell Art Gallery Society is in transition with long-term volunteers, including veteran Pat Wallstrom, retiring. With these retirements, the gallery is enthusiastically seeking new voices, new energy, new ideas, and volunteers willing to do as little or as much as they're able. It's an opportunity for those interested to work with like-minded people who support arts, culture, and heritage in our community, Wallstrom said. For all the gallery volunteers, the work is rewarding whether you commit to a couple of hours to sit in the gallery, assist with the organizing and executing of the monthly shows, promote arts, culture and heritage in the community, dress the arts centre's glass cases, help with advertising or any number of details that keep any business successful. There are two meetings scheduled for November 1st, one at 2 to 4 p.m. and one from 7 to 9 p.m. These meetings are going to be in the meeting room at the Arts and Rec Center. If you're interested in ensuring that the art gallery continues its good works, um, you are welcome to come at either meeting time, whichever is most convenient. For more information, you can contact Pat Wallstrom at 747-2271. They're not the only uh, volunteer organization looking for volunteers, Allison. Uh, quite a few other societies in town, Canadian Cancer Society for instance, they too are looking at older volunteers, I mean mm -hmm. not age-wise, but they've been there for a long time Yeah. and they need replacing. Yeah. 
Continuing on, donating to the uh, Quinnell Community Foundation will have double the input thanks to generous uh, anonymous donors who promise up to $50,000 if it is matched by December 15th of this year. This is the third year that donors have made this commitment with the first year's $20,000 and last year's $30,000 targeted both being met. If the community can challenge one another, person to person or organization to organization and receive donations uh, reaching or exceeding $50,000, that will add $100,000 to the fund. The Quinnell Community Foundation has given out more than 215000 in grants and scholarships since 2001. The registered charity supports uh, projects that offer a service to the community uh, or approach a local challenge or concern in, in an innovative fashion. Areas of focus are arts and recreation, education, health, sports and recreation, local environment, social programs, income distributions uh, fr from the fund enable the foundation to make grants to deserving local projects. Um, for further information, you can contact Fund Development Chair Dan Canule at 992-6392 or Foundation President Alex Coffey at 992-5495 or you can visit www.quinellfoundation.ca. That's awesome. Isn't it? Yeah. Imagine, $50,000. Mm -hmm. That is pretty generous so for you sure. you want to reach into your pocket and come up with... Not $50,000, that's no. for sure. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's hope that the community gets together and puts that money. You up, bet. Up well, front. it sounds like they've, um, you know, made made the challenge the last couple of years. So they have, hopefully so they'll we'll make it again. This I, year. I agree with you there. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on into sports, the Bantam Thunder hosted their first tournament of the season. Uh, this was not last weekend, I guess, but the weekend before. Prince George, Williams Lake, Fort St. James, Vanderhoof, Dawson Creek, and Westside Bantam teams were all in town to take part in the tournament. The Thunder posted two wins and a loss in the round robin which uh, was good enough to net them fourth going into the finals. There was only one point separating the Thunder from second place at that point. However, a loss in the finals put them at fifth overall for the end of the tournament. So maybe a little bit of a slow start for our, our provincial banner holding Phantom no, Thunder team, but it is I'm sure nice. they're going to pick it, it up. It's and just nice to have some kind of hockey. Exactly. That's a good point. It's a good point, thing man. they're not being paid millions of dollars. They'd probably be, <laughs> they'd on, be strike on strike too. too. Exactly. Uh, Jonas Gannon from the uh, Quinell Observer, who is the sports editor there, uh, he made a uh, an, on the weekend uh, an article on Brad Hudiak and Craig Delish. Uh, the pair won a trip to Scotland's Loch Lomond golf course to take part in the International Pairs World Finals after winning a pairs competition in Comox last year. Uh, the local team faced off against 17 other teams from 12 countries uh, and all was said and done, they placed a very respectable seventh place. Not attaining their goal of finishing in the top uh, three was difficult, but things happen and you don't play as well, Hoodie X said, adding, you can either bounce in or bounce out, and we bounced out. And what an excellent uh, analogy, seeing you're playing the game with a golf ball that bounces around all over the place. Well done, <laughs> Brett. Uh, the pair <laughs> fared well on the first day of competition, finishing uh, with 36 points, three points out of first place. But on day two, things fell apart and both players were disappointed uh, with their performance. But that's golf and that's sport, Hudiak said. Uh, and don't I know that, Brad? Uh, but good for them, and Quinnell should be uh, is lo very lucky to have two very good golfers such as they are. And I'm sure that the experience that they gained over there, they will uh, cherish for some time. I am sure they will. And actually, if I recall, when I read through the article, they did a little bit of scotch sampling and touring around in their in their off time. So. I, I don't think it was all bad. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Sounds I'm, like they had a good time regardless of the I, results. I'm That's looking, the main thing. I'm looking forward to both of them wearing their kilts golfing this <laughs> next coming season. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, you can have it. Take some pictures. We'll put them on cue today. All right. In ringette, the under 12 and under 14 girls were competing against their Prince George counterparts in exhibition games recently. The under 12 girls played their game here in town 
but despite having that hometown advantage, we couldn't pull out the win and we lost to Prince George 10 to 4. The under 14 girls managed to take control of their game, challenging the Prince George girls on their own turf, and they took the win 7 to 4. So congrats to the under 14s, and the other under 12s will come back in their next game. And talking Hopefully. about volunteers and, and games, uh, the ringette, uh, they need coaches and they also need players. They're, they're running out of players and mm -hmm. they, um, uh, the area needs these people to come back in and, and yeah. start uh, building up again. Because yeah. we've or had some real Or we'll great lose it. And yeah. Once we've you lose it, it's a lot harder to get it back. Oh, I'll tell you. And we've had some great ringette teams here in, in, in the past. Uh, from the field, about 30 people joined uh, forces last Wednesday to voice their concern regarding the proposed pipeline from Alberta to Kitimat. Uh, Katrine McLean, leader of the protest, said she'd been studying day and night to understand the project and has come to the conclusion that it is just too dangerous. Her and many other people have come to that same conclusion. McLean distributed a fact sheet at the protest in which she shared her concerns about the number of water courses crossed the number of dual hazards on the route and potential to negatively impact critical wildlife areas. Uh, we had a chance to talk to Katine at the rally. Uh, it's basically to stop the Northern Gateway Pipeline project and also for the Kinder Morgan. And what it is, is it says defend our coast and a lot of people wonder about that because they're going, we're not coastal. But if we put a moratorium on tankers, that prevents the pipelines from coming through. Right now, we've just got an honorary moratorium, and it's not in law, but we want to get it into law. Why did you decide to take up this cause? Why did I decide? Because it's so dangerous. The reason being is that the Salmon Valley, I mean the Salmon River, which flows into the Fraser, can have a spill on it. Like Enbridge is putting a pipeline, the pipeline on that river. And um, if it spills, we will be hit. And it happened before with a different company in 1974, and that oil spill reached all the way to Hope. But this type of oil is different. It's dill bit, diluted bitumen. And what it does is that when it hits fresh water, it separates. Um, and then it becomes really sticky. It goes back to the consistency of it was before. And it goes into little tiny globulates and everywhere. It just sticks to everything. So it will devastate. Just, I don't know, I can't even estimate the devastation that that would create. We saw what happened in the Kalamazoo. Well, the Kalamazoo is a very placid river compared to our rivers. So the travel of a spill on any of these rivers would be just incredible, incredible devastation, and we can't do it. And so no economic argument would uh, sway you from this feeling? No, because the thing is, is that it's one industry. It can destroy more than three industries already. Agriculture can destroy. Uh, tourism, our fishing industry, will be right down the toilet, to put it bluntly, because salmon only spawn once and then they die. If a spill hits just one river where salmon are, and it takes two years like the Kalamazoo, and they're still cleaning that, you've got two runs wiped out forever. and you may eventually kill every single run in that river to the point where it becomes extinct. And uh, what do you hope uh, to accomplish through this uh, little protest? I'm hoping that people will become more informed because the caribou can be affected by this and to let them know not to listen to what Enbridge is saying because Enbridge is like their commercial. Leave out the islands and hope that the people will believe what they say without giving them all the facts. I'm trying to tell people what all the facts are. I've spent eight months reading every report you can imagine on this. And, uh, you know, I want to get that information out there so they make a more informed decision on it. And you're going up to the MLA's office? What's going to happen up there? Well, we're going to have, uh, if there's 10 to 15 of us, we're going up there and we're going to have a conference call with him because he's actually down at the coast right now. And we will meet with him and discuss this. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. After the rally, about 15 people were admitted to MLA Bob Simpson's office for a conference call with him as he was out of town. All right, the Child Development Center Variety Show took place on Saturday. 
the folks from Mr. Mike's were there and all proceeds went to the center. The kids had a lot of fun according to Heidi Kuhn who organized the event for the CDC. Uh, apparently they raised over $16,000, so way to go Quinnell. Heidi also said it's great to see the community come, po come out and support us. So that's pretty great. It, it is. We it talk is. about volunteers and stuff like that. Quinnell mm -hmm. is one of the most outgoing cities I've ever heard of yeah. for volunteering and putting uh, money out there to help good causes. You bet. Oh, we'll move on to Sutton's, uh, Sutton's Shutters. <laughs> Say that fast ten mm -hmm. times, Ron. <laughs> I think I'll just once is enough. Now it's time for Sutton, Sutton's shutter, Shutters. Uh, and <laughs> he checked out at the Coroner's Cafe. And I'm wondering if he sang or danced there. And we've got a few pictures. Again, thank you again, Dave. Sounded like you said Coroner's Cafe, not Crooners. <laughs> no, I hope it still comes out as Coroners. <laughs> crooners. It did come out as Coroners, mm. I think. Now let's take a look at what's happening in Quinell with our community calendar. Before we close, we have a little news from our sponsor, Lions Club. Be sure to get your tickets for a chance to win a five-minute shopping spree at Save On Foods, my wife's favorite store. <laughs> tickets are $5 and are available at Save On Foods and at KMAX. The draw will take place on December 8th, and the shopping spree happens at Save On Foods on December the 18th. Please get out there and buy those tickets. They're going towards a very good cause. That's right. And we have a uh, music vid video for you from Christine Allen. As some of you know, may know, Christine is co-owner of ABC Communications and lived in Quinell for many years.
Well, that's it for this show. As we leave you today, Nate was outside having some fun in the snow yesterday, taking some video. We're going to have a look at his, some of his footage on the way out. Also, we want to hear from you with your story ideas and your comments on the show here. How are we doing at Q Today? Remember, Q, Q today, today is about, about Quinnell talking, talking to, to Quinnell. Quinnell. Have a safe and happy Halloween, everyone. Take care. Is that better? That was much better. <laughs> you know I was just teasing you. I wasn't, I like, know. mad, right? No, I knew that.